you carried in a couple of boxes of things. Well, not you, but these guys carried in a couple of boxes of equipment. Can you right. explain to me what you're going to do, what you're testing for, and how it's going to happen? Absolutely. So we're taking some water samples and some sediment samples. What we're interested in is looking at both nutrients. We're, we're interested in looking at services provided by the riparian zone and the wetland here, uh, in particular pollutant removal services. So we're interested in looking at removal of nutrients and also removal of pharmaceuticals and personal care products that could be present in very small concentrations in the river. Let me see if I understood. So you're going to see if this river is providing its own source of a way to remove chemicals. That's exactly right. And we're going to find out what in the river can do that and how much of it it can do. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. can you show me how that happens? Absolutely, we can okay. do that. take a moment to thank some of our sponsors, Stainless Products in Summers, Wisconsin, where you'll find some of the best made quality sanitary process equipment. That's Stainless Products since 1972. Friendly folks and good service. Well, so there's, there's, there's small amounts of these chemicals that get into waterways and we're looking for uh, sustainable natural ways of removing them, of limiting uh, negative uh, uh, influence of okay. these chemicals. Mm -hmm. Do I need gloves? Yeah, if you want Am them. I doing it? <laughs> I just want to wear gloves. Do you want to take a sample? You can take I do a sample take if a you sample. want to. All right. Would you like a glove? No. Why don't you wait a second? Why don't you want a glove? I don't want a glove either. No, <laughs> no, no, you ought to do it. Like, honestly, you ought to do it. That's, that would be no, great. Donald? Would be good. I think that would be, be good, cool. actually. What's the tinfoil for? That's just a, so if you want to cover a jar. Uh, oh, so it makes it like this. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I think you ought to do it. And be sure to get her on, on the picture. She uh, oh, puts her hand in with gloves. Yeah. yeah. So she's properly uh, tired. <laughs> I don't know if I would even get that on. I might get it on my hand. It's going to be tight getting off. Yeah. What do we have here? Mediums? Yeah. Well, that's okay. George is even getting gloves on. Oh, now. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Bottle. Yes. If I do this wrong, does it ruin everything? If does it ruin the, America? The yes. entire study. The yeah. entire study rests on you. If only I did something better with my life than art school. <laughs> and right now, the entire country is lying on you. That's right. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Though. No okay. pressure. <laughs> All right. Let's rock this hurricane. Do you want to take one at the same time? Please? Yeah. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Raji is wearing uh, plastic boots, jeans, and a hat. <laughs> I <laughs> have shorts on. <laughs> All right, no hat. Raji even had water. Nobody else had water. <laughs> to go somewhere deep enough to get the bottle all the way down. Yeah, I think... Uh, I feel like this might be a little oh, area. Think, yeah. I've got a little spot over here. Do we do it at the same time? Do you want us to do it at, uh, I guess you go first. It'll be easier to get one at a time, right? Okay. Yeah, so I think you can go first. If I 
I do this, Raj? Am I a scientist? Yes. <laughs> when the bubbles stop, am I full? Yes. Raj, I am so good at this. You're the natural. I'm a natural. You just come join us. This is life, man. I've made some mistakes. And then I cap it. And then you cap it. You, have to, you can cap it when you take it out, it's fine. I like to do everything in under the most the sterile under environment. The under the sea. Alright. Perfection. Just naturally, I took the stance that Rob has. <laughs> <laughs> Saviors of the universe! What would be your saying? I have no idea. I've never thought about that. Alright. Alright, Raj. Thank you. Should we do a filter as well? Another door not work time. I'll let you work time. shows the bacteria is on the table. So you can take it out, save it, and uh, we can analyze this later. Let's talk, let's talk about one other feature about this ripple. It certainly does slow the water down, and that creates an environment upstream more conducive to taking nitrogen out of the water because it drops the dissolved oxygen in the river. And if you have a lot of oxygen, you're not going to have the bacteria to take the oxygen off the nitrate molecule. That's really interesting. Yeah. So for, for outside of farms, would it be something good to do to have these little That's right. dams built to help? These little ripple structures all along our streams. Now, before we settled this, European settlement, there were beaver dam after beaver dam right. after beaver dam. They're gone. There were 400 million beaver in North America, it has been estimated, before Columbus uh, sailed into these parts of the world. And there were just thousands of beaver dams, which slowed the water down. It was a pool and ripple system. We actually have a beaver dam upstream, but we can't get to it because it's on forest preserve district property. And we don't have the permission to get on their property. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can get permission to get on if uh, you want to come back and take some more shots. But uh, the beaver dam slowed it down. And then the beaver dam also filled up with sediment. And finally, they form these vast meadows, like this will turn in to maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. And when the Europeans came, they, that served as their meadows for their, their horses, their cows, their, their wild, their, their animals. As they so we need to replace the beaver. That's exactly The best right. that we can do. We need to create beaver hydrology. Now this is their hydrology. Is that real? Yeah. Well, it's, I, I just made that up. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Beaver hydrology is very important. Now, this riffle structure was designed with that in mind. When this riffle structure was not here, 
this was all dry. Right. It was all dry over there. And the reason it was dry was because the farmer had come through and channelized, dug out the river. So rather than the river being up here, the river was now down here. And the groundwater from this side drain into the river much more rapidly. And it's called the, the, the river formed what's known as a cone of depression. And this cone sucked all the groundwater in. And when that happened, those trees started growing and there were a lot more trees out here. I mean, this was covered with trees. But these trees are all dying now because the roots are down. And when you look around Chicago and look at the forest preserves, they have channelized streams running through them, and that's why we have wooded uh, wetlands or wooded forest preserves. This shows you where when we bring the water level back up, we raise it about six feet with this river structure. We then backed up the groundwater, so it's now on the surface, and killed off all the trees, so now the grasses will grow. And there's a beautiful book uh, written by Morgan, and it's um, the Great Rivers area, the Great Rivers region, Great Rivers area, I think it is. And if you're interested, I'll send you a, uh, a, a reference to it, exact reference to it. But she describes the floodplains filled with grasses, filled like this little like out over here. Uh, you know, blue stem, all kinds of grasses. And the streams were all uh, submerged uh, under the grasses. And you didn't have open channels like this. Now, when you go upstream, if we could get you on there one of these days, and you will see from the road where the plants are now growing in. Cover it back up. Cover it back up, exactly. That's blowing my mind. So the forest preserves that are in this area are man-made by us. Yes. And this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is actually better for the land That's right. for so many reasons, including getting rid of all the toxins that are all in the water the naturally. Down. Providing habitat, uh, recharging the groundwater. I can't use atomized, atomized, atomized. enough. I can't use atomized enough That's today, but yeah. So, atomized everything it, yeah so incredible we, we built we built this uh, on purpose and i was absolutely dumbfounded when the army corps gave us permission to build this and the forces were just have to be complete. they don't know and, well they I, I don't think they really understood what it was going to do yeah but what it's done is it's created this wetland that wetland over there and then it's back water up all the way to wadsworth road where we will take you to look at the uh, the river there. All the way up to uh, Watchworth Road, it's raised to the foot or so. And so now we have more water. It's clear. Now, because it's clear, the native fish species can now hunt because pike and bass, they are sight feeders. They have to see their prey. Well, in turbid water, really turbid water, and this water is clear relative to what it was before. Uh, I have some pictures along with this. Look at it. Where, where it was back in 1974. So cloudy and it was always oh, cloudy and it. muddy. Yeah, it feels so like mud, clean. Mud soup. And, yeah, exactly. Mud soup. Well, the the pike and the bass couldn't find their prey, whereas the carp uh, hunted their prey just by touch. They dredged channels in the mud, stirring up the mud, and that's what made our river so muddy. It wasn't the velocity, or the storms floods, but it was the fact that the carp were out there stirring up the mud, digging, they'd dig about a channel, about a centimeter deep channel, and then they would eat the worms and the insects and so forth. Well, those insects are also food for birds, and there'll be time you come out here, and this will be just covered with river swallows or other birds. In fact, we've had eagles uh, hunting the uh, ripples. We do, you have eagles here. Yeah. Oh, there's a huge population of baldies Good. here. So, the ripple structure has changed a lot, but mostly it's changed the hydrology and it's provided flood protection for Gurney. Yeah. Because it slowed the water down, right. backed it up, put it out on the floodplain, stored it there until the water level drops and then it begins to come back in. 
Now it comes back in through the soil and it gets cleansed that way, the bacteria and the soil help. So exciting. So it's a, uh, it's a multi-purpose structure. And we hope to repeat this sort of thing up and down the West Plains River. Mm. And this could save billions of dollars because it will take out the nitrogen and phosphorus. And if you take it out in wastewater treatment plants, you have to use a lot of electrical energy. You have to use a lot of labor and you have to have a lot of capital because you have to build these tanks mm -hmm. and uh, mixers and all that. Mm -hmm. So it will be uh, a big tax savings. In fact, we had J.P. Morgan do a tax study on it, and they showed that it would save the taxpayer 50% of the incremental cost for upgrading the wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. And I'll send you that if you're interested. I am. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put together a, a bunch of these. Is this the end of our journey today? Well, uh, we're going to go back. Uh, and we're going to go up and I want you to see the uh, Death Plains River. See how far down you can see? Yeah, along it's the so bank. clear. Right. And then all this vegetation has come in. Uh, and you can see a lot of the uh, attached algae, the paraphyton, which has really taken, taken hold. And all of those plants help take out nitrogen from the water. It's the color you want to see. Because if, okay. if you could get down and look straight down, you could see the bottom of the river. Okay. It's crystal clear. And you're not And the <laughs> darkness is due to the tannic acid, which oh. comes in from decaying vegetation. Oh, okay. So that's why streams up in northern Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, they, they'll be tannin. They'll be uh, brown like this. Okay. What I don't want to see is the uh, coffee with cream. Right. Uh, colored, uh, you know, mud soup. Yeah. That's what we want to avoid. Now, what we're seeing here is the the tail effects of the Riffle Dam that we just visited. Okay. We've raised the water level here maybe about a foot, mm -hmm. slowed it down, and now we've cleared it up by harvesting carp. We've harvested a lot of uh, carp over the last three or four years. Yeah. And the pike have been able to take over because the pike are sight feeders. Okay. And so they can eat the small carp. They can't eat the big ones. Right. But they eat the small carp, less than one year old carp. And they eat the eggs. And so they've reduced the number of carp that are found in this river now. Okay. And consequently we have clear water. One. Because as I, as I explained before, carp hunt for their food by dredging the bottom of the river about a centimeter or two, okay. and then they fan the sediments up into the water column. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's it was coffee colored okay. with all those sediments. Uh, on the plants that you see, uh, on the surface, there are lots of plants below the surface. And those are attached algae, paraphyton, uh, other, other plants that are there. And on those plants, the bacteria grow that use the oxygen from the uh, nitrate molecule. And the nitrate molecule, NO3, nitrate molecule is what farmers use to fertilize their fields. Okay. And that's what's causing the problems in the Gulf of Mexico. So now we have a river way up north here that is actually taking nitrogen out of the, the river. Okay. And this is the most efficient place to do it because the concentrations are higher the streams are smaller, there's less water to deal with. And so by implementing a program like this, through all of our streams in Illinois, in Iowa, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, and Missouri, all those states that feed into the Mississippi, mm -hmm. by having a series of ripple structures, we could take care of the nitrogen problem. And that would save literally billions of dollars 
in construction costs. I mean, hundreds of billions of dollars. For Cook County alone to meet the uh, Illinois standards for nutrients, for nitrogen and phosphorus, they would have to spend $2.5 billion. Right. And that isn't nearly as stringent the Illinois standards aren't nearly as stringent as the U.S. EPA's standards. Okay. So they're going to have to fight to get those standards accepted. Right, right. But $2.5 billion, if we built wetlands like we did here, we could save them $1.6 billion, over 50%. And you have a very educational video piece on that on your website. Right, we do. We do. And Wetlands Research has been uh, working on this concept for a long time okay. and we've also worked on a uh, concept to help fund it and that's called uh, riverine national parks it would take stretches of river like this declare them national parks build the riffle structures the owner of the land would remain the owner of the land mm -hmm. and he or she would operate those structures and earn money from the sale of the nitrogen and phosphorus and pharmaceuticals and, and right. other contaminants uh, that, that that wetland that they operated would remove. So it becomes a money-making proposition. And we estimate that they could earn four to five times more money growing wetlands than growing corn and soybeans. Very, very interesting. Uh, things that none of us think about. That's why, uh, well, I mean, you do, of course, you're into this, the research, but it's very good to bring this out to people. Oh, no make question. It, make them knowledgeable on it. No question. Donald, I'm really glad that uh, we got to meet you today and that you were able to educate us on this. This is, this is very interesting. Well, I thank you very much for I uh, think folks are gonna find this and oh, introducing absolutely. wetlands research to absolutely. a broader group of people. It would yeah. be, be great. You bet. You I bet. say we have a lot of um, technical papers that sure. have been peer reviewed and published, but that doesn't reach the audience we right. really need to reach. Right, right. And you're you're just the kind of person. You're just the person to help do that. To get well, we're we're definitely going to do that. And then, uh, yeah, we probably should do some follow ups with you. That'd be and great. Stay on the wetlands and learn more. Sure, we'd be happy to meet with you anytime. Sounds great. Right. Thank you so much. You I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Try to remember, our planet Earth belongs to all of us. It's up to all of us to get involved to help take care of it. I'm Dean Romano. And I am Tirza, and we will see you next time. All right.